player with a hidden strategic sub his last combat unit, basically, and won wow. the game. So you never, ever want to count a game out until the ACU has, has actually exploded. But as far as having a strong upper hand, Mozart's definitely got it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, absolutely. I mean, games can swing, uh, can swing either way, uh, you know, with the click of your fingers. I mean, quite literally. I mean, we, we were involved in uh, in a fairly fantastic game, which may or may not be going up on one of our channels. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, on Monday, totally check that out. <laughs> totally check that out. Awesome game. Awesome commander snipe. I think that was uh, top notch. Top notch plays. Anyway, enough plugging. Back to the game. Back to the game at hand. Looks like Mad Mozart's frigates are going to be going to town on uh, on Zlo's little island, unfortunately. I would love to see a torpedo upgrade on that commander. Um, yeah. If he could actually get that upgrade secured, he would be able to deal with all this no problem whatsoever, and I think it'd be a worthy investment. Even at the moment where he's got all that navy sitting on top of him, there's only one sub there. So he could actually just stop building and get the torpedo upgrade, but he's got the T2 comm, he's actually gonna reclaim frigates. <laughs> wow, not a bad move, not a bad no. move at all. I mean, All that's... that build power, might as well put it to use. Exactly, and reclaim all that, that one. mass just sitting there, yeah. It's, it's great, it's fantastic. And, right. but, but certainly, in terms of map control, uh, it's looking a little bit better for Mad Mozart, uh, I think. It is, Probably. yes, kind of. Um, it's not as bad as it was just a minute ago, though. And I am a little more worried about the mass income discrepancy because Zlow is basically half the income. Uh, yeah. We got 12,000 versus 6,000. He is half the income, double the reclaim is basically what it boils down to. So mm -hmm. um, he is going to be able to stave this off for a while. He may actually be able to make a recovery. It does not look as bad as it did a minute ago. But I don't think he is out of the weather. Mm -hmm. I just want to take a quick opportunity right now uh, to say that people in the stream, uh, because we've got so many people watching, we now have quality options that are available on the stream. So you can actually change the quality if it's lagging for you. You no longer have to watch it at the source quality that Brink is uploading. So that is important to note. You can watch it at a lower quality. Sorry to interject. <laughs> just had to say it. People no, having, absolutely uh, fine. Issues. And all Reload. the more reason yeah. to uh, get that view count bumped up to 100 as quick as we can. Because yeah, then we get the absolutely. quality controls. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. Oh, man. But it looks like Zlow is, is potentially pulling it back. I mean, he's got uh, he's got quite a lot of frigates, a lot of naval factories, probably more than his opponent. I, I can't entirely remember. Um, well, let's take a count. We can actually see. Yeah. There's the T1 factories. We've got 13 and 13. one T2 with some assistance there. And, yeah, Zlo looks like he's got 20. more. 20. Yeah. Yep. But no That's T2. Fair. That makes sense. But no T2. I think that is probably the next stage, I would imagine. I would imagine that's where uh, where Zlo is going to transition to. This and looks certainly... fun down in the corner. <clears throat> we got Corsairs oh. building up. Which can oh. potentially wreak some havoc if uh, those are not taken care of. Hmm. And it looks like he's indeed. trying to be sneaky with them because they are streaming around to the back side and kind of hiding in the corner. I'm going to have to see where he invests those. The ACU is obviously in the water, so can't really hit that one. Uh -huh. But uh, he may be able so to do some damage. Yeah, what is that? What is that ACU upgrading to? Is that the T2. tier two upgrade? Tier two. Thought so. Thought so. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mad. Okay, so it's very, very fifty-fifty at the moment. I mean, we've seen uh, you know a fair bit of back and forth, but on the whole, I think <clears throat> unless Low does something fairly cheesy, then uh, then this could be a Mad Mozart win. I don't think that that is unfair to say at this stage in the game. He is. I mean, pushing on triple the income of yeah, Zlo. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. part of that was uh, part of that was power stall, maybe. But let's see. That is uh, one forty-seven income, and then Zlo is pulling fifty-ish. Yeah. Which actually does not sound right, unless yes, he is basically on all T1 mass extractors, no upgrades whatsoever, and he lost this chunk of real estate over here. So not an easy hit to take, for sure. Wow, oh wow. 
Zlow sitting on 17,000 reclaim to 6,000 for Mad Mozart, so pushing up on three times the reclaim. So that's that's impressive. So Zlow is clearly filling his uh, his mass deficit somehow, and it looks like reclaim is the the preferred and only method of doing just that. So pretty much, it's impressive to see. It's impressive to see how much reclaim that is. I mean, that's yeah. you know three times. That's not insubstantial. In this well, place. a minute ago I was saying he's got half the rec half the economy and twice the reclaim. Now it's literally a third the economy and three times the reclaim. So, hey, as long as you're killing your opponent's boats, sucking them up and building your yeah. own, it doesn't yeah. make any difference if you're getting the mass from an extractor <laughs> or from a wreck, you're getting the mass. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, the more reclaim, the better, the more mass, the better. But has Zlow gone tier two yet? I, I really don't know if he has. Tier two naval, has has he done it? Um, he has not, and it's about to bite him in not. the butt because we now have T2 sub hunters online, which are just going to eat the frigates alive. Oh, and man. yeah, this is interesting over here. We've got frigates breaking through the naval blockade, actually pushing up, trying to get in <laughs> and do some damage. Are we going to see a two-prong attack? Because if he draws the Navy up, you can see the ACU is out wow. of the water. If these Corsairs were up here, we could have potentially seen an ACU snipe. But oh. uh, unfortunately, they're just not close enough. They are just not close enough, but I have a feeling that uh, I don't think Zlow exactly wants to do that. I mean, I think he's probably going to aim for, you know, just normal damage of normal buildings. I don't really think it's... I don't really think he's going to be targeting uh, well, the ACU. He's focus firing but, the commander at the moment. So, why why is he doing that? I mean, there's I there's have no idea. So <laughs> there's so much other stuff that he could do. He must be <clears throat> trying to do a a torpedo bomber snipe or a corsair snipe. That must Something. be what he's trying to do. He's moving torp bombers up around. Ah. If I were him, I would take both, and that way it wouldn't matter whether the ACU is on land or in the water. I could hit him with one or the other, and then if he tried to escape, hit him with the second option. Yeah. But uh, uh, that is me, and I am not him, so he can use his own methods. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I feel your pain. Okay, we're continuing, and uh, and things seem to be going well for both players, actually. I, I Honestly, honestly, I think that there's not really much that Zlo can do unless he pulls some cheese out of the bag. And uh, to be honest, if if anybody could pull cheese out of a bag, it would be slow, wouldn't it? I mean, it absolutely would be slow. Stinky, I mean, stinky cheese. Stinky, stinky, <laughs> 20, 30, 40 day old cheese is absolutely <clears throat> with the realm of possibility from uh, from from slow. So fantastic, fantastic there. That's that's some rather scenic shots you're getting us uh, you're getting us of There's those lovely frigates. Still no T2 naval upgrade. I don't understand. Zlo is going entirely short term on this. He is still one third the mass income, half the power income, and completely under the tech level of Mad Mozart. Now, to a certain extent, you can get away with that, but eventually the economic powerhouse will take you out. There's only so much that can be done, and I think we've hit the tipping point here because you can only reclaim as long as you're rolling forward. Um, yeah. Once you start getting pushed back, your opponent's going to start getting reclaimed, so now we're going to see the gap start closing oh, on that wow. number. I, I presume Zlo must be trying to push the ACU into the water, probably trying to threaten the ACU so that he can actually make use of those torpedo the bombers, torp bombers up there. I'm going to swap intel yeah. in just a second so we can see what the guys have scouted. Here's the Corsair, so we'll see what everyone else can see. But for now, Zlo at 24,000 reclaim, basically, and 74 mass per tick income, and then 8,000 reclaim for Mad Mozart, who does not have the torpedo bombers on his radar. So Zlo wow. is half the income, basically, and three times the reclaim still. So neither one of these groups of air are on the radar. This is going to be an all or nothing. If Zlo loses his air on this and does not kill the ACU, I this is, this is going to be tough for him to come back from, I think, because he is well, losing all of his frigates. He needs, to, he needs to time this perfectly as far as I'm concerned. He needs to get at least a little bit of damage 
uh, onto the ACU by the frigates. He also needs to make sure that those Corsair shots line up perfectly. They are coming in from the east right now. The torpedo bombers also have to be on standby. That's I not have good. no idea why he's deploying them right now. We he have a cruiser. Like, looks like he's gonna get it. He's gonna get a oh, barrage. Oh man. Oh, oh my goodness. Those torpedo bombers are standing by. Very, very, very threatening to that ACU. And Should as soon as they the can water, pull targeting. Soon as the ACU is in the water, they are gonna oh, just clean up. The gamble wow. worked. <laughs> wow, what a game. Someone what has sniffed game. the cheese. <laughs> wow. That was phenomenal. That was really very, very good. Look at this. Wow. Slow has lost his right island. He has left islands about to go. He's got nothing on his home island. All T1 mass extractors. His ACU clinging to life on the outside edge of the map. <laughs> and there's all of his combat units. <laughs> that is phenomenal. That That is impressive. That is impressive how that, that game managed to turn around because for the majority of it, Mad Mozart had a stranglehold on the map without a doubt. Yes. Wow. That was definitely wow. a gimmick game. It's not often you see a game that is 100% all in on a gimmick. <laughs> wow. And that was definitely wow. one of them. He's like, well, if I don't kill this ACU right now, I'm dead. So I'm going all in. <laughs> So my question is, did Zlow end up doing that gimmicky play because he couldn't succeed, uh, you know, in just a one-on-one? -on -one? Or did he do it, you know, did he, did he plan it from the beginning? Was that um, a long-term plan? Can both be an answer? <laughs> I don't Here, think so. Here's my theory, and I, I will present this, and I'm sure some of the guys in chat will have interesting opinions on this. Um, oh, we've got two matches left. We could actually yeah, start ongoing. one of these other ones. Um, let's see. I think in second place, it was Obfuscation versus Mephi. So I think that we are obliged to do that one. Let's go ahead and jump in. And we will do the final results of the tourney after this one. And I will give you my thoughts on this um, while this one is going. I'm not going to go in depth on the early build on this one because we just saw one. Okay, so my theory is you can... Oh, well. Uh-oh. That's a problem. This is uh, interesting. Let's see. What the heck is going on? Oh, it oh. just ended. They just finished. So let me go over to... Well, we are going to... Do we want to just watch the other one since it's the only live one? You know what? Um. Well, I can tell you the result of the last game in case anybody's interested. Uh oh. Go back to Turney. Uh, what is the last match? Mr. Smith versus Ajux. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. Why not? Let's let's jump into it. We might as well give uh, give the people that are still watching on the troopers. Let a hundred and nine of them. Holy cow! That's a that's a record. <laughs> that is an absolute record. Um, for the record, Mephi one versus Blow Deer. I'm not entirely sure that is correct. Oh, Bloodier won. I see it in the chat. I think Bloodier <laughs> won. Yes. Okay. So uh, it looks like uh, it looks like there is probably going to be a tie break. I don't really know how. Uh, I don't well, really know how how else it's going to be decided. We can watch this game while they're figuring out what the tiebreaker is going to be. For sure, I will. I will keep my nose in the Twitch chat. Uh, yes. Not the Twitch chat in the uh, in the tournament chat for sure i will my personal theory on the whole slow play is okay. there is actually a legit game method where you can just plow ahead full steam no upgrades entirely t1 all t1 mechs all t1 power and survive strictly on reclaim and sheer force of will because you plow so much of the enemy under and reclaim it and recycle it so fast that they can just never catch up so, mm -hmm. I think that might be what Zlow tried to do, and it uh -huh. didn't work for him. So, he knew he was already behind. There was no way that he could reestablish his eco in any way that would match what Mad Mozart had. So, once his initial steamroll attempt didn't work, 
he just fell back and went for, you know, chips down. I'm going to go for an ACU snipe because there's no other way that I can win this. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then got the results that we saw. He actually pulled it off. So, Wow. It, w- it was some game. It was absolutely some game. It was it was phenomenal. Yes. Wow. Well, we've got Mr. Smith versus Ajax now, and this is actually going to be Cybern versus UEF. Um, Ajax apparently is a huge UEF fan because I think he's pulled UEF on every single game we've seen him in. I cannot remember for the life of me. I cannot remember for the life of me. And, wow, I just can't get over how crazy that last game was. It was really <laughs> intense. Definitely. We're seeing a little bit of a different expansion pattern on this one because Ajax is actually sending his ACU to the right side of Island. He's going to establish a presence there with the commander itself in person, which is actually nice because it means that bomber isn't going to be able to kill an expansion here. Uh, and then on the left-hand side, dropping some NGs with a transport. On the south end, we've got another kind of conservative condensed build for Mr. Smith. Stayed on the island a long time, three air factories down, and he is dropping a bit later in the game, but with a more established presence. So who do you think is going to win this game overall? I mean, we've seen, we've not seen Mr. Smith play. We know he hasn't performed perfectly throughout this tournament. I think he's probably the weakest player here. I, I'm not entirely sure. We really, we really can't say. They're um, all strong. They're all strong. They're exactly. all strong. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if he can take any consolation from it, he's the weakest out of a bunch of eight strong players. So, wow. Yeah. It must be really difficult for him to sleep at night. No, um, no. Who do you think is going to win it? Who do you I am going to have to go for Ajax, just because he is a little bit higher ranking, and um, we've seen good things from him the last little bit. I love this play down here for the island. He actually went three engineers versus six it was a good run, but I don't think he's going to make it. T1 Bomber's coming in for Mr. Smith to clean up that mess before it even got started. So, nice little attempt. That was definitely a bold move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it looks like Mr. Smith is concentrating his presence more heavily on one specific island rather than the other one. Is that is that going to be a long-term, <clears throat> tactically... Advantageous position. No, he's he is all in on this side because he has to eliminate Ajax. Yeah. Since there's not a threat over here, he is not pushing units that way. So once that factory is eliminated, he'll be able to push out in other directions, and he won't necessarily be tied to that island. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Got another drop right there, man. Ajax is putting some units into some weird places. He's not sticking <laughs> to the tried and true safe methods. Well, you know what? It's the people who break from the tried and true methods that eventually, potentially, will end up uh, victorious. You never know. You would hope. I mean, well, that's the excuses that I use for my bad plays all the time. We've got a direct artillery assault. <laughs> wow. On okay. the island over here, we've got one single land factory, which is going to try to push out some... Um, artillery to counter and the bomber cleaning that up beautifully but the damage here was that there were a lot of engineers that were lost right there that was actually a nice little use of the artillery and i say that because since there's only one land factory to get that level of build power up again he's going to have to invest in some more land factories yeah so yeah without a doubt could have been better but definitely could have been worse Okay. Wow. So okay. many T1 bombers. So many tier 1 Holy bombers. Smokes. You know what? I I don't think Mr. Smith is doing half badly. He like, is not. He's got a firm, is... tight grip on air control at the moment. Exactly. It's a very very, you know, good stance that he's uh, that he's putting forward. Without a doubt. Oh man. Okay. Sorry. I'm I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm concentrating on the tournament chat at the moment and trying to read all of the updates that, uh, that, are, that are going forward. Uh, let me just say Obfuscation 1 and uh, it looks like Zlow and Obfuscation are both going, no, not, not Obfuscation. Yes, yes, Obfuscation. Let me, let me refresh. 
Uh, yeah, Zlow and Obfuscation are going to be going forward into a tiebreaker. I think they're just hashing out the details as we speak. So we will be bringing you that as soon as we possibly Fantastic. can. And uh, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be really, really good. Comments in chat. Um, they were saying that there were only 10 engineers here. That was my bad. I thought that there was a double stack of engineers on this side. So it was more like 20 or so. But apparently that uh -huh. artillery drop was a failure overall. Um, did oh, no. not succeed as well as I thought it had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a comment uh, a little bit further up saying, I don't think your donation uh, your donation notification is working, Orville. Um, no, it's not. We turned it off because people, people were really, really grumpy about it last time, apparently. <laughs> really, really grumpy. Really grumpy. So, you know what? I, I caved to your demands and, uh, and it is now turned off. It is now turned off. That is, that is for certain. Sorry. Anyway, continue with this fantastic commentary, Brink, that I am being less than helpful with. Oh, no, Please you're continue. fine. Um, we do have T2 Navy out for both of these guys. As usual, we can pretty firmly say that Cyber and T2 is generally stronger than UEF T2. Some of that kind of yeah. depends on the micro and your unit mix and the quantity. But, yeah, Cybern is going to definitely have a bit of an advantage, if nothing else, than in range. But uh, he is doing very, very well at securing the right side of the map, getting all of these uh, islands, just laying down pressure, basically, is what he's doing. There is some units on the left side as well, though. Ajix is picking off the mass extractors around the edge with the limited reach of his frigates, and since all of the naval units are on the right side, he is pretty much free to dominate that portion. Got okay, a little bit moving is... in on here, though. I, I honestly don't understand how Mr. Smith has uh, has lost all of his games up to this point because, as far as I'm concerned, everything that we've seen from him is... It's good. It's really good. Well, Isn't I think it? it kind of falls back to these are all good players. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, yeah. He probably, probably didn't lose the other ones by huge glaring errors. He probably just got slightly outperformed in some areas, so... Yeah, absolutely. Well, absolutely. that was a nice little bit of micro from Ajax, I gotta say that. Yeah, yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like Ajax is going to be pushing Mr. Smith's Navy back a little bit, but at the same time, on the other side, we're gonna see Mr. Smith's Navy push back Ajax's. So, tit for tat, as far as I'm concerned, tit for tat. It's interesting, the, the Cybran... Cyber destroyers, I would say, are objectively stronger than UEF. The damage on UEF is higher, but it's the range that's the problem. But when you see good micro like Ajax had, where he's um, zigzagging and circling with his units to try and dodge as many shots as he can, if Cybern is not careful, they can be overrun. Um, and once the UEF gets into point blank range, it is going to win. So well done, Ajax, on that recovery. Uh, I really, really like that little bit of naval micro. It's, uh, you know, it's it's that sort of it's that sort of difference that uh, that will win it or could win it. I think uh, you know every little helps, as they say, uh, yes. especially in a game of pros. So well, Mozart, awesome. uh, not Mozart. I keep saying Mozart. Mr. Smith was doing fantastically <laughs> well up till about three minutes ago, and now it is looking a little bit more dire for him. He's got a cruiser okay. off his shore, picking off his economy. He's got units in the base taking out his navy. Ugh, this does not look pretty. That's not great. That's not great at all. Honestly, I, I don't understand why the frigates aren't targeting the engineers. I mean, I know, you know, engineers, you know, they're fairly replaceable. But I, I would always value the fact that uh, you can just eliminate some of that build power by getting rid of some of the engineers. Yes. Well, he did eliminate some build power because he did kill a factory off and you know, some indeed, other yeah. units around here. But you are right. It will slow your opponent's recovery when you're killing off build power. But one of the reasons that he got the hell out of Dodge is because we've got T2 subs down here. Um, four of them, actually. And UEF Navy cannot handle subs unless you have Coopers. And there are no Coopers in the front ranks of this army. So there are some in the back. Once he gets those up to the front, right there, there's three of them. Um, once he gets uh -huh. the Coopers up, he'll be able to deal with those subs. But no Coopers, you got to run. You're going to lose your whole Navy to a handful of subs. I mean, just looking at it, you can see that, uh, that the naval presence of Ajax is 
rather more substantial than uh, than Mr. Smith's at this current time. I mean, I yes. think that's that's probably not a not a huge leap to uh, to say. So, hey ho. I find it hilarious that every time one of these players makes great strides on one side of the map, the other player mm. is making basically the same strides on the other side. Yeah, it's fairly even, isn't it? Mr. Smith lost his island down here, which was bad, but look up here. <laughs> Adjix has lost his island as well to those two destroyers. This is not pretty, though. Wow, okay. This is great. Uh, I, I love a good combat scene like this. This is where um, you can see the Coopers were able to eliminate one of those subs, I think. There's still a group of them in the back here. You can see that one right there just died. And that these are getting nice, picked yeah. off. There is just so much stuff going on right here. This is why you don't want to attack someone necessarily in their own base. Because they have the build power. They have the factories as meat shields. Um, this is going to protect their combat units. So the combat units can kill yours, but you can't kill theirs. And uh, that, that's just going to end badly for your force. That looked impressive coming in. And I think if Ajax had spaced himself out given himself some range and taken time with that, he would have done a lot better. But holy crap, just ramming all of your units into the factories is not going to work. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I, you know, I think we've some, seen some uh, some absolutely top quality plays, uh, you know, in this tournament, and, uh, and I think it is absolutely fantastic. Just making everybody aware right now that the final map has been decided uh, the the final, the tiebreak final between Slow and Obfuscation is going to be going ahead and it's going to be going on Bermuda Locket, apparently. Nice. And yeah, we'll be bringing you that game very, very shortly indeed. Those guys are just in the game lobby at the moment. And, uh, and this game actually is still going on, the one that we're currently watching. So we'll be watching another five minutes-ish or so of this and, uh, and then we'll be switching over to there and watching the grand final. Oh, man. Absolutely. I am watching the units flow by at more speed than is healthy because I just want to burn <laughs> as much of this game off as we can before we have to leave it so people can kind of see what is going on. Well, it's kind yeah. of like an anthill, all of the things scurrying around. <laughs> I, you know what? I think the game has, uh, has, a, has, a, has a certain beauty, you know? It's, uh, <clears throat> it's very impressive. You know, to see it from this angle, it looks like a completely different game, doesn't it? it yeah, it does. does. It, it's, it really does. Uh, it is nice from the strategic standpoint to be able to basically watch Icon Wars, which is what this is. It does yeah. let you get a more clear picture of what's going on. But I think a lot of times people forget how beautiful this game is. I mean, when you really get down to it, this game is seven years old. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't know it, would you? you would Almost not know eight. It. This looks like a modern piece of art. It really does. It looks fantastic. Oh, man. Man, oh, man. Really, really very, very nice, isn't it? And you gotta admit, the Cyber Destroyers look badass, especially turned oh, in red. Oh, my goodness. They really do. <laughs> they look freaking awesome. They look absolutely amazing. Cannot complain with that. Cannot complain with that. Cannot complain about that. Oh, man. Oh well, who do you think's gonna win it? Who do you think's gonna win it from what we know now? Um, it could go either way song? because there, there's two things. Number one, Ajax definitely has superior mass map control. He is pushing up on T3 Navy with UEF, which is going to be a game end scenario when you're cyber because UEF at the T3 level is just way stronger Navy wise. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. Mr. Smith has far more eco and just got the most epically glorious of mass donations handed to him on a silver platter. So, I mean, all right. with this okay. amount of mass, he could easily whip up something that could just stomp all over Ajax. So, eh, I, I would be reluctant eh. to call it. <laughs> You'd be re Oh, and, and yeah, you've been reluctant to call literally every single game that I think uh, that I think we've cast, but somehow oh, I've look managed at that. to squeeze it out of you. Someone calling in the chat. Good call. T three was cap or UEF was captured by Mr. Smith, and he is going to be pushing a T three UEF factory. So wow, yeah, wow. that is going to be a game changer. That is. 
With that, the reclaim and the superior mass income that Mr. Smith has, that could actually win him the game. Wow. Okay. That that is <laughs> that is very very major. Swap up. Jeez, Louise, I did not expect that in the slightest. Too wrapped up in staring at all the units from a panoramic view to notice that there was actually a T3 UEF factory there. <laughs> yeah. Yay yeah. for observational skills. <laughs> yeah, or, or lack of, or lack of observational skills, without a doubt. Oh, man, this is, uh, you know, it's looking good. But, you know, the air battle is, is a battle that we haven't really seen that much of, you know, I mean, since the early game. I mean... Both players have got a substantial amount of interceptors, but uh, they seem content to just let them let them rest and uh, not fly around and not use up fuel, I suppose. I think if these guys engaged, Ajax would probably win hands down, barring probably a massive a micro blunder. Without a doubt, yeah. Without a doubt, I think that that is, that is completely correct. How many naval units... Uh, how many naval units does each dude have? Both have a fairly substantial amount, so that's about... Uh, 33 frigates, 2 destroyers, 2 subs, and 2 coopers. 39, give or take. And then that is... To be 14 frigates, 6 destroyers, and a cruiser with 2 battle cruisers, which is... 2 battle cruisers. Yes, which is going to make a huge difference. So I would say in current standings right now with what's at the front line, red would take it. Um, we do yep. have one battle cruiser moving down, but there's also a second battle cruiser moving up for Smith. So overall, Smith actually has a superior naval force at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without, you know, I think that's uh, you know, and the fact that he managed to capture uh, a, a, a UEF, a UEF engineer, that's that is that is unexpected. I didn't expect that, uh, that to be allowed to happen. It was probably that. on this island over here, and I just missed it. Yeah, it's fairly easy to miss, though, isn't it? I mean, it's not uh, not a not a big deal. You know, I, I, oh no! I Especially not yeah. when you're buzzing a game at plus four. <laughs> exactly. We are we are zipping through this game. It is uh, well, it is, it is zero now, thing. but it was plus four. Um, what is our timetable looking like? Do you think uh, do you think we can hop into the finals game yet? I think we can probably exit out of this game, and well, I can say with uh, with safety that this game is still ongoing at this very moment in time. So how it is? It's still ongoing. Yeah. Well, my CPU can handle plus six. Not much more than wow. that, though. <laughs> I'm gonna bump it back to five. <laughs> yeah, no, the game the game is still going on. And apparently there was... There's a 60-minute time limit. A 60-minute time limit, apparently. Okay. So, apparently... Well, we're not going to see this, obviously, because it's, it's too late on. But apparently there's nukes involved. So, yay for nukes. We may yay have to uh, come back and cast this at some point just to finish it up. Yeah. But for now, we're going to have to drop it. So, sorry, folks, that wanted to see the conclusion... The finals are in progress, and we're going to try to stay up to date on the tournament schedule. So, you can pick up this replay number. I will actually fish out the ID for you while we are looking at the other one and post it in chat. If you want to go watch that replay for yourself, you can watch the replay on one screen and watch the stream on the other screen. Get both games. Just information wow. overload. <laughs> information overload. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be the five minutes. It's certainly going to be close to it. So, okay. Well, let me dig yeah. up that replay number. and uh, Sweet. And uh, we will get right I into it. I cannot remember yeah, his name. Hold on. Zlow it's a and, dash, not an underscore. Yeah, Zlow and Obfuscation both finished the uh, the Swiss style with one loss each and four victories each, meaning that they are... Uh, tied on a score of four. So, wow. Very, very, very well played to both of these guys, as far as I'm concerned. They're both winners. They're both winners, aren't they, man? They're both winners. Absolutely. All right, guys, that's Yo. the replay ID right there in the middle of the screen. Help yourself to it. 3986952. Or you can carry on over and search Mr. Smith's name or double-click the live replay icon, which may or may not freeze when the game ends. So um, that is up to you guys. You can 
cue that one in and watch it. Sweet. Dude, do it in your free time. Do it now. Do it whenever. Doesn't matter. All so right. We are watching Zlow. We are watching Zlow versus Obfuscation. All That's right. right. Let's hop in. Fingers here and crossed see if it's launched. Fingers crossed we can. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. If we can't jump in right now, we can. Hooray. Score. Oh, man. That's beautiful. Absolutely top notch. Top notch. And it's going to be great. Oh, Bomboy221 just uh, just posted the replay number in the chat, Twitch chat. Thanks very much for doing that. We appreciate it. It's very, 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 very kind of you. Oh, Vladimir. Frank. <laughs> would you care to would you care to take would you care to take us into this uh into this game please Holy cow this is another Cybern versus Cybern matchup Either the RNG gods have spoken their preferences on the superior faction or everyone is choosing Cybern which means it is the superior faction But one way or the other Cybern's awesome <laughs> Without a shadow of a doubt so up in the top left corner, we've got Obfuscation, and down in the bottom right, we have, of course, got Zlo, the cheese meister himself. You know, we've come to know and love his cheese. He's he's so very, very cheesy. It is Sometimes fantastic. it succeeds, and other times it is spoiled cheese, but one way or the other, we're going to see how this game turns out. Well, we actually did see, we saw one game where he went all in on a commander kill and succeeded, and we saw a second game where he went... All in on a commander kill and epically failed and died to T two units. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm I'm okay with the cheese, and I'm okay with the cheese for two reasons: is sometimes it works, right? And when it works, it's amazing. And when it doesn't work, it's easy to see why it doesn't work. You know what I mean? So yes, it's uh, it's easy to see why it doesn't work and, and where it goes wrong. So for that reason, I freaking love cheese. Like cheese, is great. It's fantastic as far as I'm concerned. And uh, and Zlo's cheese is the best in the business. That's right. It's best in the business. Oh, but oh man. What a tournament we've had. And what a final this is uh, This is promising to be. The two like... very best players. <clears throat> wow. Looks like we've got uh, land and second air for both players. So they're going to be mirror matching through the beginning of this game. We're just going to have to see who executes it better. I mean, is there a chance that... Uh... You know, I mean, one person might go bomber, the other person might go interceptor. Is it a chance that there's going to be hard? There, there's going to be a hard counter immediately, and that is just going to be purely down to intuition and uh, a feel for the game. I, I don't know. I think that could quite conceivably happen. Well, um, I think T1 bombers early are definitely a possibility because these expansions are hard to keep a hold of early in the game because they are just so far away from your base of operations. Usually you'll see these guys will push out like to here, and they'll actually string land factories along so that they have yeah. a base of operations pushing forwards if the forward one gets destroyed. Um, but yeah, bombers are devastating because on a map this big, obviously killing off expansioneers is bad in any game, but when you have that much travel time involved, it can seriously lose you the game if you lose those engineers and don't get replacements out there quickly mm -hmm. so we've got a couple of theories in the in the chat drop rushing is that a possibility building some air transport units and just just bum rushing halfway across the map dropping some units doing a little bit of harassment is that a possibility it is yes people telling me to do wow. control shift to look at the reclaim wow. that's how much reclaim there is <laughs> that's a lot that is a lot. Several thousand on each end of the key. That is, that's impressive. That is, that is very, very impressive. I just want to, you know, I mean, I presume that these are probably going to be going up on Brink's channel. If anybody wants to see the videos after time, Brink's channel is the place to go to see them. I just want to point out right now, I want to put this on record, baby. We've got 110 people watching right now. 110! Yep. For a seven-year-old game. 110 <laughs> if, if that's not if that's not crazy i don't know what is so oh my it's goodness. a tribute to how awesome this game is basically it's, it's, what it boils it down to it's a tribute to how awesome the game is oh man oh man i think this it's the most viewers i think we've ever we've ever seen for for something like this or for yep. anything most viewers that i've ever seen that's for sure peaked at 111 Absolutely. just a few minutes ago 
I think it peaked at 113. I think that is really. Uh, I think it peaked at 113. If we can get it higher than 113, this uh, this tournament that would be something crazy. So get on it, guys. Get on it right now. That's right. Get on it. Blowgear oh is doing an awesome game. job of dropping. He's got uh, engineers over here. It looks like he is loading up the transport for a second round, and Zlo is taking the more. Um, well, there we go. He is dropping. I was about to say he's taking the slow, slow and steady progress route, but he is actually going to get some transports out and try to get some factories down on these expansions. So we'll just have to see how well that works out for these guys. Don't uh, not too many T1 bombers coming around. Fewer than I thought there would be. There's one right there. So are we going to see any engineer snipe-offs by the bombers? Is that a possibility? That is the goal. It that is, is kind goal. of headed towards barren territory here. Um, but uh, maybe he will encounter something that he can kill. Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. This is good. This, uh, you know, this, this shows how seriously that both players are taking it. The fact that they're... They're getting bombers out, and they're uh, they're doing an appropriate amount of harassment. And yeah, it looks like your prediction of crawling land factories is going to be correct. I uh, I am sense. wondering if this is what the terraforming of a planet like Mars will look like. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're taking a red planet. They're going to terraform the entire planet into a, a star-shaped a, a planet like Mars. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not really with you, but let's just go with it for the sake of uh, for the sake of the audience. Oh man! I okay, take so... no responsibility for where my mind wander to, wanders to on occasions. <laughs> Sometimes it just kind of leaves the premises, wanders away. Have to reel it back in. Some of it may yeah. have to do with the fact that we've been talking for what four and a half hours straight now. Uh, I think it's more than that, my friend. I think it's more than that. It is currently yeah. 5.20 p.m., and we started at 1, which would be 4 hours and 20 minutes. No, it, we. I can tell you the exact length of our Skype conversation. 4 hours, 47 minutes, and 58 seconds. Yikes. That's intense. That's intense. This like, is, yeah, this is wow. the level of our dedication to this. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. It's absolute insanity. Um, but actually crazily talking about the game for a second slow has almost no presence on his left sort of leg he's got a presence on the right and he seems to be focusing all of his efforts there but it looks like obfuscation has managed to split his resources evenly between both legs of his of the map i suppose so i don't know how that's going to turn out but certainly it's going to deny slow the opportunity to get uh, to get that extra sweet sweet mass yes. that's uh that his opponent will have by now. Well, and this also, is kind of what I was talking about with the whole uh, building factories up the leg of the map, because then yeah. if you lose the forward position, you've got something to fall back to. You can see there are some mantis coming in. We got four versus one, so this is going to be pretty dang tight. But with yeah. the HP of the factories, the damage that these are going to be able to soak, I think this will get denied at least the first run. So I think Zlo will be okay on that side. Yeah. Uh, what about on the eastern side? I mean, on the eastern side, Zlo has got a little bit more of a presence. Obfuscation still, you know, he's, he's got an army. He's not shy uh, of, uh, of confrontation. You know, he's building a bunch of factories up on the midpoint of his leg. But I don't know. I mean, is, is Zlo going to manage to deal with that? through his, uh, his proxy land factories. Is that a possibility? He has got as many land factories up as Obfuscation does, and it looks like Obfuscation does have a couple more planned, but he should be fine on this side. I don't think he's going to lose any ground over there. Um, overall, map control is split just about 50-50, actually favoring Obfuscation just a little bit. And Obfuscation is pulling in a little bit more mass than Zlo is, but Zlo... Uh, he is power stalling now. That is a problem. Zlo is doing a bit more of a center aggressive build. You can see he's got frigates across. He's trying yeah. to win control of the navy in the middle, which I would imagine would mean that once he can secure a hold, he would go T2 navy and be able to bombard all of the positions all the way around the map, and that would help secure him the ground that he lost in this whole mess. 
That is, that is very, very true indeed. However, Obfuscation has also elected to go for a few naval factories in the middle. So, I don't well, know. Three frigates sitting on top know. of one frigate and three factories. So, as, as long as he keeps killing the frigates as they come, he will be able to hold this off for quite a long time. Um, and eventually be able to kill these factories. It's going to be tough for Obfuscation to get out of this mess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that's certainly going to hinder him, but I don't think that that is going to be detrimental. I don't think that's going to be uh, an, an, uh, a game-changer, so to speak. But, uh, but hey-ho. Yeah. I'd say if he can shut this down and get the T2 Navy online, then it will be. And there's a little bit of interesting play right there. That was a ground fire order on the... Uh, production pad of the factory and there he's doing it again he's actually killing the frigate inside the factory so that he doesn't have to deal with the combat unit probably gonna wow. do the same right here right there so he's gonna be indeed. able to kill the factories with impunity and Blodir is actually pausing his factories not even bothering to build them because he knows it's pointless <laughs> Wow. That is, that is, you know, that is when you know you're up in the pro leagues when people are doing some very, very, I don't want to say complex, but it's kind of cool, kind of cool stuff like that. It's so outside impressive. the box stuff that sometimes people don't think about. It is, without a shadow of a doubt. Now, you did say, you promised me that, uh, that Zlow would be all right on the left leg. It doesn't really look like that's the case right now. No, it looks, it looks like, like he's being he pushed back. Off some of the first wave, but he just was yeah. not able to get his footing, and now all of this is starting to flow down from Bloodier, and it's actually looking a little bit more hairy on the right side as well. Looks like we've got uh, seven factories there, and that is going to be an even eight on wow. this side, but Bloodier already starting to build these mass extractors, probably going to be start building some factories there as well. So, Zlo's got a little bit of catch-up to do land-wise, but he is the uncontested owner of the water, at least in the middle. Yeah. And, and that will, of course, mean that his frigates will be able to harass the heck out of any units they choose that are on land, you know, obviously yes. the fact that it's, uh, like these. you know, projectiles. <laughs> Exactly. They could just do whatever they they're, darn well They're please, hanging so. out a little too close to the water, literally clinging to the side of the cliff there, and uh, <laughs> that frigate's going to be able to hit them. Without a doubt. I mean, I, I didn't think that the central reservation or control of the central reservation would be as key as it has turned out to be. I mean, what can Obfuscation do to get back in this game? Because it looks to be uh, that the navy in the center is going to be key to victory here. Um, well, ugh. that is actually a toughie because Zlow has actually made progress in several grounds here. He is, there we go, T2 Factory called it, there it is. He's going to be pushing destroyers and probably cruisers now. Um, he has gotten more factories online on the right. He is overwhelming the right on land. He's got his ACU in the pass to stop the flow of units on the left. So it is now... Uh, just about exactly 50-50 map control on kind of a diagonal, yeah. and Zlow has got superior economy and control of the water, so mm -hmm. a lot of things looking up for Zlow at the moment. Wow, that is that is for absolutely certain. Jeez Louise, it's it's close though, it is close, and is, is there really any way to get around the fact that Zlow has such a stranglehold on the central reservation? You know, that, that big-ass lake in the middle. Is there any way around that? Is there... Well, is torpedo there bombers be before he can get cruisers online could potentially work. Um, mm -hmm. And he does have a T2 factory, which he is producing engineers from, probably for power. Um, so there's a couple options that he could go with, or a stronger land presence even. My, I would almost think, if he wants to build Navy, build it on the outside, because Cyber Destroyers can walk. So oh, he could yeah. actually have factories on the back side, clump up five or so destroyers, and then walk across the landmass to the center and use his Navy in the middle. That is very, 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 very cool. Uh, it looks like Zlow is patrolling for probably this exact reason. Uh, trying to stop any naval factories. What is that? That is a that transport is... full of engineers. Engineer, where is it going? I'm not sure. 
Right there, Where maybe? Where can it go? Or is it it's dropping him? Nope, it's dropping him in the water. So he's actually going wow. to stop that before it even starts. All right, here we go. This is the push back into Navy. He's got a ton of engineers online building torpedo launchers for all he's worth, trying to <laughs> shut down the frigates. But as soon as this destroyer comes out and comes into range over here, that's all going to get shut down because the destroyer is going to far outrange the torpedoes and it's it's just not going to go that well for him, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Torpedo well, bombers could assist, though. That could very I well can, swap yeah, things I was, up. I was a way to say obfuscation. I see out of the corner of my eye that there are some torpedo bombers over there. But still, I'm clueless to what these engineers up in the top left-hand corner are uh, are doing. I mean, is Zlo taunting us with some more cheese? <laughs> I think could he is. very well be. I don't know. I think he is. It's kind of off the map, off radar. Let's see what he does with it. It's very, very strange. I mean, a naval factory or something? Maybe if he puts it down a naval factory and uh, gets a destroyer out and harasses some of the on-land buildings of obfuscation from the other side, then that yes. would be overpowering. I presume that's probably what it would be. Um, some people in uh, in the chat saying, sniping the ACU? That's uh, It's a possibility, certainly. And uh, the firepower from outside... The uh, you know the arena, so to speak, will uh, will definitely help. But yes. I don't know. I really don't know. I really am clueless. Looks like Blodier is pulling in 101 mass per tick off of his permanent economy, and then he's got 12,000 reclaim total, 18,000 reclaim for Zlow. Wow. But Zlow is power stalling. A large portion of that, I think, could be attributed to his uh, reclaim income. So you can see when he mass stalls, he is plus two to 600. But uh, he is definitely struggling a little bit with some power problems. Uh, but beside that, he is 10 income higher than Obfuscation or round about that level, pulling in well over 100, it looks like, but uh, blipping up and down. Well, no, 61. Those are some weird numbers. It stuck so long on the 111 over there that I thought that was permanent income, but that is actually sustained reclaim numbers. Wow. He is doing okay. the all T1 mass extractor thing again. Well, no, there's a couple of T2s here, but mostly T1s. That's that's a risky game to play because then you're sort of, you're admitting that you're only going to be playing for a short game and there's there's no chance of you ever progressing to the, to the mid and eventually the late game. I mean, that seems counterproductive, but well, maybe that's just me. I can think of two things playing into that. Uh, number one, Bloatier is a bit more of a team game player and a dedicated eco whore. So, towards, dedicated eco -whore. <laughs> towards the end it. of the game, uh, I think Bloatier is going to favor scaling his economy. Um, whereas Zlow is pretty much a one versus one, as far as I know. I know he has played quite a few team games, but he does play a bit more like one versus one style. So he's going to be trying for an early win, and in some cases I would say that works in his favor because of the time limit on these games. Um, yeah. So, Although, important to note that there is literally no time limit for this game. Oh, there isn't? Literally, There's literally no time limit. Nice. Yeah, so, unfortunately for me and you, we could be here all night. Well, it's I hope that this possible. isn't a two-hour Bermuda Locket game, lock game, but uh, we'll just have to find out. I, I will say, though, for being T1 Eco, essentially, um, Zlo definitely isn't hurting. I mean, he is maintaining no, his map control. Great. Yeah. So, can't fault him. Without a doubt. Without a doubt, he's doing well. However, the fact that he's allowed these, uh, these naval factories to exist in the center, I don't think that bodes well. <laughs> I don't think that bodes well in the slightest, I'm afraid. Well, I don't know about allow. I don't think there was anything he could do about it. <laughs> I don't think there was anything he could do about it, no, but, uh, but perhaps, perhaps, yeah, I don't know. It's it's interesting for sure, and I think it's going to be, it's going to hurt him, I think, you know, yes. the fact he used to have uncontested, uh, he used to have an uncontested area in the middle, and now that is no longer the case, so that's that's got to hurt. That's got to hurt, without a doubt. Obfuscation is sitting on 15,000 reclaim and Zlo on 26,000. 11,000 up on reclaim. So, 
almost double. Wow. Once again, seeing another game, Slow is just completely outstripping his opponent on every form of mass income except for mass extractors. <laughs> that, that's so impressive. I mean, that's such a risky line that he's taking, isn't it? I mean, the fact that he's relying on that reclaim, he's relying on his units and the enemy units to die in order to be successful. That is such a risky strategy, isn't well, it? Well, they're gonna so die risky. anyway. You can count on them dying, so you might as well reclaim them, you know? That's a good point. People are That's asking an for another control point. shift. There wow. is the reclaim. So wow. you can see Zlo has picked up pretty much everything in his base. Uh, Blodeer has not so much. He's got a lot more yeah. mass sitting unused in the base. And then you can see Zlo has picked this entire side clean up until his current combat zone. So, I mean, That's you can impressive. see the difference. The lack of green tags on this side for Zlo picking up all of his reclaim and the enormous amount of tags where the combat's going on and where Bladir's bases are. So, we did see that... Uh that naval factory did go up you know the one on the top left of the map and it looks yes. like it did indeed spew out spew out eventually spew out a, a, a fantastic unit there we go cruiser that is that's that cruiser fantastic cruiser it's looking, looking gorgeous isn't it gonna wow. be mowing down those mass extractors to the best of his ability unfortunately there's some terrain getting in the way i think nope he is overshooting it that is the that is fantastic that is fantastic and the good thing about having a cruiser, obviously, is the fact that if you fly any aircraft anywhere remotely near it, then it's going to be shot down. Yep. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, the ideal first unit, I think, and uh, it's just going to apply more pressure to, uh, to obfuscation. And he can do some probably fairly serious, uh, serious damage to his... Or Zlo can do some fairly serious damage to obfuscation's economy through probably just the use of that cruiser. I mean, he's already taken out to six mass extractors. That's going to hurt. Yes. That is going to hurt. Obfuscation is getting knocked down. He's back down to his original 101 mass per tick income. Um, obfuscation just barely breaking 20,000 reclaim and slow a bit over 30,000 reclaim. So still wow. a third over as that's this combat rolls on. Very intense. Wow. You see, Zlo is up to 83 mass per tick, which means that he has gotten a couple more T2 extractors and capped some more T1s. But overall, I mean, the overwhelming majority of his mass extractors are T1. And you can see Zlo is, or not Zlo, Blodir is pretty much got T2 in most of his original base and even an outside T2 way over here. So Blodir has been more about upgrading the mass extractors. That is that is absolutely fantastic. I mean, a top-notch game so far. I, I really do like the fact that this cruiser even exists. Like, it's it got doesn't, a destroyer it doesn't, to keep him company now. It does it exactly. It doesn't seem it doesn't seem like a complex idea. Yet I think it's it's really rather effective. Uh, yes. You know, and in a little a little harassment uh, around the outside. I I really I really think it's fantastic. I There's really a cruiser really slowly fun. picking off air on that side. And uh, I do like the, the frigate spam that was coming from Bloodier, and he did a really good job recovering Navy. He's actually got his factories down in the north again as well. But the amount of destroyers and cruisers that Zlo has in the middle are going to be kind of hard to overcome unless obfuscation just goes 100% in on naval production. We do have some, uh, some torpedo bombers moving in on this cruiser. They... yes, that's going to connect. Ugh. Yes, okay. That's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt because now that uh, now the destroyer is, un is is undefended, undefended from the the air. Unfortunately, yes. we do have a little so, bit of a problem here though because that power generator is under fire, and I don't oh, think yeah. the torpedo bombers can kill that destroyer before that power generator goes down, and that's gonna hurt Blodier a fair little bit. It's gonna kill off that power, and then it looks like target the. ECU swapping around a little bit, just kind of helter skelter pelting things in the base. Well, the, the destroyer realizes it's dead, so it might as well just just target whatever the hell it can, I suppose. Yes. And uh, Zlo is probably going to save it for as long as possible, but hey ho, it's going to go down eventually. Hey, look, and it does. Forced into do a power stall. 
exactly wow. the intention. So obfuscation and a pretty hard power stall until he can bottom out his mass bar, um, which is not really going very well for him at the moment. Minus 800, minus 600 power. And there's the correction. Holy cow. That hurts Holy to look at. Cow indeed. It's, it, it really does. How is how is the reclaim figures looking? Sorry, I did not catch obfuscations, but Zlo is 35, 35 for Zlo, 24 for obfuscation. A 10,000 difference. That is yep. that is substantial. That is really very, very good. Wow. It looks like units are going to start coming in on Zlo's left side. This is definitely not collapsed, but it is not looking as healthy as it did before. Bodir has gone for T2 land. And it looks like Zlo is entirely on T1. No T2 upgrade in sight for land. So that is going to end up hurting him, I think, unless he can end this game fairly soon here or make an impact on the map in some way. Now, where is Obfuscation's ACU? Because I am not entirely sure where it is. It is there. It's fairly safe. I don't know, Zlo in the middle with an ACU like that. That's... Yeah, it's well, aggressive ACU. Having the commander out when you don't have any interceptors left, and your opponent has at least three torque bombers that you know about. Um, yeah, that's asking for a dead commander. To be completely honest, yeah. he yeah. does. Does he? I thought Marching he had a cruiser. Forward. There's a Marching cruiser. Marching forward. That seems ridiculous. Yeah, the cruiser is behind him, not in front of him. So. This is a little bit of prime sniping territory that we're delving into, but maybe he can make it work? Well, yeah, the fact of the matter is you'll need a couple of torpedo bombers and a couple of passes, and you've got a dead ACU. I mean, that's the way that uh, the torpedo bombers work. They're very, very powerful. Yes. Yeah. So the naval presence is very strong in the center, though. Cybern frigates have a deceptively large amount of anti-air damage, um, mm -hmm. so... They can knock torque bombers down by themselves. And he does have three cruisers now. So he is relatively protected. I still wouldn't personally stick my ACU way out there. But uh, someone commenting, if he had stealth, well, he does not have stealth. So that, uh, that's not there to help him. Oh, he is upgrading <laughs> stealth. The caster's curse I strikes I swear, again. yes. <laughs> that's phenomenal. Being proved wrong as normal. soon as he says something. <laughs> wow. No, that uh, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But yeah, still. So uh, that's done now. Wow, that was quick. That was fairly quick. Jeez Louise. T2 Jeez Commander. Louise. Lots of build power, cheap upgrade. Yeah, wow. Yeah, good point. Good point indeed. This Looks is like a little worse. is pushing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is... Uh, this is going to cause uh, Zlo some worry, I think. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And uh, and the fact that he's already been pushed back along that rung doesn't bode well, I don't think. You know, he doesn't, it doesn't bode well. Well, see, that is not as worrying as this is. Because I think we're about to see a closing on the commander right here. Uh, there's a lot of torpedo bombers coming. Ooh, is this going to be Navy or is this going to be ACU? Well, the ACU is completely unprotected. There is one cruiser around. It's going for Navy. But he's going for... Is he going for the ACU? Nope. Navy. Thank you. Navy. See, the problem here is that Bloater like is in the water. So if this naval force can push up right here, that could be very, very dangerous for his comm. It really could be. Yeah. But, uh, man, lots of, lots of interaction going on down here with this Navy. Without a shadow of a doubt. But still, I'm concerned that that is a very, very advanced uh, position for the ACU to be in. Yeah. I, well, I really I really am. He does have the stealth. In a minute, we'll go see where um, if he's showing up. For the moment, though, Zlo is still on about 70 mass per tick income. So still not teching up, and he's actually losing income down here on this edge. So we're basically coming wow. down to where he's going to need another cheese win if he's going to pull this off. Um, obfuscation, Absolutely. pulling 105 mass per tick, uh, but he is on 30,000 reclaim. Zlow is on 45,000, almost 46. Wow. So 16,000 reclaim up, that but reclaim doesn't do you any good when you can't build anything, and he's now losing exactly. his build power. Exactly. Without a, without a doubt. 
and it looks like it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be close because we can see that Zlo's forces are moving up into his opponent's base, but at the same time, Obfuscation has a serious land presence in Zlo's base. So both are are causes for concern. This is gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. That is uh, that is some serious power over there that uh, that Zlo would probably like to avoid losing if at all possible. I the would, uh, entirety I of his power grid is in this base. So he will be wow. legitimately in a 100% power stall if the tanks make it into this mess over here and kill anything off. Now he does have some destroyers moving in. Looks like he's going to lay down damage on those Wagners. Going to do his best to take them all out, but he is going to lose his T2P gen. Ouch. Ouch. Mm. Not good. Not good at all. Uh, yeah, no, it was clear that that, uh, that, that naval that naval uh, presence down in the south was... That's so close. If those tanks keep moving towards the back, they can just straight up outrun the Salems. And that terrain is definitely helping, but nope. They are going to move down. Did I lose Orbital Potato? I think I did. Give me one second, guys. I will try to get him back up here. Alright. Ah, why does this always happen? Skype is freezing up on me. Well, torpedo oh. bombers are trying to come in and clean out this navy, and Zlo is not looking too good at the moment, to be completely honest. Let me... Yep, there he oh. goes. Torpedo bombers in. Sadly, Anybody potato hear missing. Me? Ah, there he is. And gone again. Well, Obfuscation wins it, takes the tournament. Let me see if I can get uh, Orbital Potato back online with the absolute worst timing for a um, Skype disconnect that has ever occurred in the history of mankind. Stop it. Come on, PC. Work with me, not against me. I think Skype is having some serious technical difficulties today. All right. So... To sum that up, uh, Zlo was successful in killing off everything on the south side, and he was able to recover from that, but he just did not have any protection around his ACU. And Obfuscation caught sight of that thing, had all of the torpedo bombers on hand, and just swooped in and eliminated that comm. Man! That was a tight finish, and I am kind of sad that Zlo wasn't able to pull off another cheese victory, but such is life, such is life, that is going to end it all. Let me, um, we are obviously out of the game here, so I'm going to exit out of this, and let me attempt one more time to get Orbital Potato back on the line so we can get his final thoughts. I think, this is my personal theory, that Skype on this PC is for some reason encountering massive, massive difficulties. Because I had a crash earlier with the Skype program when it would not cooperate with me and end that task and kill it out. Then we'll start it back up one more time. Um, and then just now, it apparently crapped out. Waited four and a half hours. Almost made it through the whole cast. Ah, there it is. And we got him back. Hey, man. Hello? Totally Hello? missed it. I'm here. I know. Uh, I know. I missed it. Did you oh, see? My did you see the kill? I did. I did not. My my uh, like sod's law, right? I mean, you had a tree fall on on your thing. I don't know what happened to my internet, <laughs> but something happened, right? It was probably a tree. Let's face it. Yeah. Holy cow! Uh, something happened. I didn't see the kill. I did know that uh, that Zlo won it. I'd I'd known that from about. You know, I'd known that for a fair bit because I was reading the chat. But yes. Oh no! I missed it. I'm so sad. That's Wait, so bad. Zlo won it. 
not Zlo won it. The other dude, Obfuscation won it. Obfuscation. I was about to say, oh. I just watched Zlo die. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. All oh, right. My goodness. So, Torney oh. is concluded. The tiebreaker did favor Obfuscation. Nice torpedo bomber snipe. Well done all the way around to everybody who played in this thing. Um, it, that was an epic set of games. It really was. I'm glad we did it. It was fantastic. Really top-notch plays right there. It was great. Yes. So that was the salt tournament. And I think it was aptly named. We got our fair share of salt and fair play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would say so. Fair share of awesome gameplay as well. <laughs> it was really, really good. I mean, everybody is a winner here. Everybody is a winner. There's no losers in in this high level of uh, of Supreme Commander Forge Alliance plays. It's top notch. Absolutely top notch. Yep. You really can't complain. Well, I'm going to plug for my YouTube channel here. Uh, if you do not already know about it, go to youtube.com slash Brinko Insanity, spelled just like my name over here in the chat. And I'm actually going to be posting this up. I'm going to try to get it up tomorrow with the video segmented. So if you missed any of the games that we've casted, if you want to watch certain portions again, you can go to the beginning of the video, hit the... Uh, hit the highlight box for it and jump directly to that game because there's going to be a huge chunk of video to sort through. And then if you want to watch more casts from us, Orbital Potato, go ahead and tell them about your Twitch and all that good stuff. Well, I do loads of stuff here on Twitch. It's not just Supreme Commander. So uh, be sure to tune in if you're into other sort of strategy games. And uh, yeah, we do a lot of stuff over on my YouTube channel as well, which is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Orbital Potato, we do a Supreme Commander game on Mondays. I also do a bunch of other stuff with other folks. So, yeah, come along, join the party. Everybody's going to have a great time. Just subscribe to both of us so you'll never be, uh, you'll never be alone again, basically. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, we even uh, release a game together on Mondays where we uh, uh, Potato has been playing for on FAF for a while now. About a month, you'd say? A little over a month. Uh, yeah, give or take, I would think made huge progress so we have a lot of fun with those if you're a relatively new ish player uh there's a lot of tips and tricks going on over there a lot of stuff you can learn from so you should totally check those out all right and, I, yeah sorry no just just to quickly point out the game that we play on monday i can't remember whose channel it's on <clears throat> but there is one game that is absolutely top notch the snipe on the commander that happens right <laughs> totally worth the 40 minute video all right without a doubt <laughs> absolutely worth it <laughs> 35 minutes of mediocrity <laughs> yeah oh man but you get to listen to us all the way through so it's all good it was great yeah all right no, it was it was fantastic it's great i think we can officially wrap that up there anything else you want to add no Don't i just want to say thanks to everybody for coming along we managed to get i think at the peak 126 people that were watching that is a phenomenal amount for a seven-year-old game and uh, two dudes that have been doing youtube for a year i think each a yep. year each so uh so this is fantastic hopefully we can continue to promote this fantastic community and this fantastic game uh without a doubt there will be more stuff in the future i can guarantee you that and uh and yeah hopefully you guys will all be along for the ride so i think uh, i think that just about wraps my uh my spiel up all righty then well that's going to be it for us as always guys thank you so much for watching and i'm sure we will see you for the next tournament. Bye.